welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is Real Talk San Diego on Facebook Live. We're bringing you the business of life in America's finest city, presented by our loyal partners at Five Star Escrow and First American Title. I'm your host, The Mortgage Doctor. I'm Sean Courtney with Global Mortgage. I uh, have the pleasure of being joined today by two very special guests. Uh, with me today are Realtor Jesse Salas from Harcourt Avanti. Yep, Harcourts Avanti. You All right, it. Harcourts Avanti. Okay, I said that right, real estate. You did. You Thanks did. for being here, Jesse. Thanks for having me. Uh, later in the show, we're going to talk uh, to Jesse a little bit about Harcourt's unique uh, auction platform and some of the other ways that Jesse uh, is marketing and, and using technology to help his buyers and sellers uh, buy and sell their homes. Uh, also with us today is Dan Tentler, founder of the Phobos Group. Uh, thanks for being here, Dan. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, welcome. So next, uh, later on, we're going to be hear, hearing from Dan about all the fun he gets to have infiltrating companies, uh, stealing data, uh, and generally uh, creating chaos. That's right. All right. <laughs> but always using his powers for good, <laughs> peace, justice, in the American way. Yeah, it all, it all basically rolls out to training. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, and t if you're watching, uh, we are live. We're streaming. So we'd love to hear from you. Please uh, feel free to give any questions, feedback. Uh, any any thoughts you might have in the comments section, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions for either of our guests or myself, uh, please put those there and we'll be alerted to that by our lovely producer, Claire. Um, so we're going to jump right in today with realtor Jesse Salas. Um, Jesse is uh, a realtor with Harcourt Avanti uh, Real Estate, where he was ranked number four top agent in San Diego County uh, recently. And he's also ranked number 15 for Harcourts nationwide. Uh, he was a panel speaker for the Tom Ferry Real Estate X, uh, 8X event here in La Jolla recently. And also, he's a top expired listing specialist uh, here in San Diego. So welcome again, Jesse. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you've been around real estate for, for a while. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got into it. Well, um, came out of like a lot of us, out of the mortgage industry. Uh, got tired of being behind a desk and unfortunately having to, to uh, follow those underwriting rules. They just, they were tough, as <laughs> you know. They got really tough after the whole bubble burst. Right, right. So decided to get on the other side of the table. Uh, my personality, I think, lends to that a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more agree. social, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and uh, just really enjoyed uh, that smile, that feeling, when you were able to hand somebody the keys. That mm -hmm. was a great thing. So I uh, jumped over to real estate and really never looked back. Yeah, one of the best decisions I've made. Awesome. And one of the things you, you know, I mentioned in the intro, but one of your specialties is taking properties that haven't sold and getting them sold. Yeah, expired or canceled listings. Um, I know as, as a lot of new real estate agents come into the market, they're kind of uh, pushed that way, right? It, it may be an easy way for a real estate agent, especially a new one, to capture business. But unfortunately, in my opinion, I think that second time around, that second listing is more important than the first time. So who you work with matters. That, that experience, bringing somebody on that's going to be able to re-energize the property mm -hmm. is huge. A and the difference between a new agent and an experienced agent is huge. As far as the tools and the resources we're able to use to get that property out to the masses. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, especially in this market, people think that you can list a property and because there's low inventory, it should sell. Well, every day, 25 to 60 properties hit the market, or excuse me, come off the market as an expired listing. Mm. A lot of those are some great homes, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that they're overpriced. It's not that they're a bad home. There's, there's a lot of things that may be wrong with it, right? We come in, we look at what was done or what wasn't done and reposition it, going after the likely buyers to purchase in that area, right? There's different demographics in every area, right. making sure that we're targeting those people. So we're exposing it to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and what are some of the ways that you do that? Well, we talked about it the other day, virtual staging, which I know is a, a big uh, issue in my industry. There's a lot of agents out there that do not like virtual staging. Uh, they don't like it for the reason that you, you get, you, the client gets to the property, they're disappointed because now they see an empty room. A and I get it. Uh, that makes sense. Um, I can sit here all day and argue that that's not what we're selling. We're selling real property, not personal property. For me, I'm very selective on when I use the virtual staging, right? An empty room is not that appealing on the MLS. And we really have only a few seconds to make an impression on that buyer. Uh, buyers are very savvy, right? They've seen a property sit there for some time and they know it didn't sell. They start thinking there's something wrong with the property. My job is to get people reinterested in that property. And sometimes virtual staging has been, it's really done wonders to get people excited, uh, whether it's spatial concept, whether it's just giving them an idea of what could the property could look like, the potential, that's been helpful to get traffic through the front door. And let's face it, that's our goal as real estate agents. Yes, it's to sell it for the highest possible price, 
but we got to get them through the front door first. Right. Well, there's a pool. Not everyone's going to be interested in it when they see it or don't see it or whatever, but if you can get that traffic through it. It's more likely of a chance that we're going to get it sold. Yeah. yeah. And, and you guys also, with Harcourts, you have a, a pretty unique position in the marketplace as far as what you're doing with the auction technology as well. Our Can auction share, platform. Share that with us a little bit? Yeah, so our auction platform, very, very excited about that. Um, it's really just been another tool in my tool belt to be able to um, expose properties a little bit differently. So Harcourts Auctions, Harcourts is one of the oldest brokerages in the world. They've been doing this in Australia, New Zealand for some time. And over there, if uh, you if you do the traditional type of listing that we do here over there, they're gonna think something's wrong, right? About 95% of their listings are done via auction. Hmm. So we brought that process over to the United States and it's just blowing up. Uh, over the last 12 months, I think we've done about 700 or so. Um, I'd say in what, California, Oregon, uh, Nevada, and we just recently jumped over to Hawaii. So it is catching on and uh, kind of along with the same thing I just said, we're bringing people through the front door. Mm -hmm. Our auction listings, um, and we have the stats because we're, we're big on stats, we're bringing in 50% more traffic through that front door than a traditional listing. And again, traffic is everything. Well, and so right now I think the, the real estate auction model ha may have a little bit of a bad reputation. Um, how it's employed, not by Harcourts, but by how it's been employed by other companies. It's very restrictive on the buyer. There are a lot of kind of baked in expenses that people may or may not know about. How, how do you guys do that a little bit differently that you feel it's a, a better product in the market? Absolutely. I, I mean, everybody thinks of auctions and they think of a online auction. And, and we're nothing like that. This is a real auction. We're having auction events right now. We're doing so much business with our auctions. Once a month now, we're doing auctions um, at a hotel, right? We, we rent out a banquet room and we actually do the live auctions there, wow. which, which is awesome. It's amazing. You, you got to see you it. You have one of those Barker dudes that like, talks we real fast? Absolutely. Yes. Ben Brady, he's nice. our director of auctions here. He's been doing this for some time. <laughs> Um, it, it's, it's, it's a pretty neat thing to see it live and in action. But um, what we've been able to do is we've been able to really dispel some of the, the misconceptions with auctions, right? We, I think, have a better product as far as disclosure than most. So for example, what we do is we do all of the disclosures, whether it's the seller's disclosures, the general home inspection, the termite, the natural hazard, you name it. All those problems that tend to cause problems during that escrow period, and what I like to say, take a good buyer and a good seller and kind of, you know, get them uh, to a point where they don't like each other anymore. Right. We do that all up front. So now when you're looking at one of my properties and you're thinking about making an offer on my property, you have all that information there for you. You're more educated going into it. Mm -hmm. You don't have that feeling like, hey, we went back and forth bidding. I paid above my comfort zone. Right. And now I find that this home has this problem, that problem, and whatever else right. may be. Right. So the buyer wants some sort of credit or repair. And the seller feels like, oh, you're just trying to take advantage of me. Right. This really, I, I think, keeps deals together. Yeah. And, and one of the important things to note is there is no buyer premium, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. and we only work with non-distressed properties. Okay. So these are sellers that have equity in the home. Mm -hmm. right? Very rarely do we have a property that is purchased by a buyer all cash. W and when you say distressed property, you're talking about financial distress for the seller, typically. Exactly, because we also think we associate auctions with something that's being sold at the courthouse, right? Somebody that's lost the property and the right. bank is selling, that's not us, right? Mm -hmm. We want people to, to, to come into our auction properties and have more information about that property. And under our auction process, there's actually three phases. They can purchase the property prior to the auction day, that auction event. They can purchase the property on the auction day, or uh, every once in a while we have a property that will be sold after auction. We just ha I just had one the other day that actually sold a few days after auction. Mm -hmm. We weren't able to put a deal together during that auction event. Mm -hmm. We would have kept them there for a long time, everybody else. Uh, but we were able to do it a couple days after. Right. So our numbers are amazing. Uh, out of those 700 and some we've done in the past 12 months, we have about a 90% uh, success rate wow. right now with these properties. And on average, we're selling them within 28 days. Wow, okay. So we brought up expired listings a little while ago about 60% of our uh, listings, auction listings, are auction listings, which is a great number. That's the number I'm most proud of. Homes that other agents couldn't sell for some time, mm -hmm. luxury homes, right, difficult to sell because not everybody could afford them. Mm -hmm. Then you also have homes that, uh, you know, uh, that are expired, that people for whatever reason think there's something wrong with them. We're taking those two negatives and we're turning them into a positive, right, and selling them within 30 days. Well, and the transparency, I think, is a big help, especially when people see that something's expired Something, like you said, something's wrong with it, but if you're being very transparent with the condition of the property and all the other details that, like you said, come up and we'll trip a deal up, yep. um, 
I think it makes people feel a little bit more comfortable when they're in that process. Exactly, and, and I think that's what we see a lot of. We get a lot of people, especially agents, as well as their clients, come into the property, I don't like this, I don't know what auction's about, I'm not sure we even want to partake in it. We love the home, but right. we're not sure. Right. What, we hold open houses twice a week uh, for about one to two hours, all the way up into that auction event. So we're always there to be able to explain the process. Mm -hmm. And once we explain it to everybody, they really, we find that most people feel very, very comfortable yeah. with it. The buyer's agents get paid the same, the buyers don't have to pay a premium. It's, there's no difference than a traditional listing up until that auction event day, other than the fact that you get more information, right? right? You're more educated about the property. Well, and so one of the challenges we found with some of the buyers w we work with on the financing side with a lot of these auction companies is you're very limited in the, cl in the closing window. A lot of things need to happen very quickly, which puts challenge on, challenges on t traditional financing companies. And so they try and push folks into using their preferred financing companies. A lot of times they're more expensive, sure. more restrictive. Um, how do you guys work with that on the financing part of it? So we will never force anybody to use anybody. Of course, we have our own lenders. We have our preferred lenders that sure. we love for them to use. But yeah. um, because we're dealing, like I said, with majority of buyers that aren't all cash, that are like me and, and most people where they have financing, they have to use a lender, and those underwriting and turn times tend to be lengthier, you know, that's the reality of it, we can accommodate that, mm -hmm. right? We know that our contingencies, and by the way, every Harcourt's agent, auction agent is different. We're all accredited, but we do things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. The normal 17 days of contingencies that most buyers have, they don't necessarily need all that because all those inspections and everything sure. has been done. Now, if they want them, that's sure. no problem. They may want to have their own person go back in, but at least they've got a starting point. Exactly. The I'll, I'll talk about one of the auctions that we have right now. Uh, they had their full 17 days to get their loan um, underwritten. We gave it to them, no problem at all. Mm -hmm. What we've done is we basically just eliminated a lot of the pitfalls. Sure. The lending side, we know we can't play with that. Use your lender, no problem. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make sure everything is on the up and up there, but you have your full time to get that done. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, we're here with uh, realtor Jesse Salas from Harcourt's uh, Avanti Real Estate. Uh, we had a comment or question, Claire? Yeah, John Dax is showing some love. He said, great info, Jesse. You are a class act and bring a ton of professionalism to our profession. Thanks, Coach John. Appreciate <laughs> it. That's my real estate coach, by the way. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. So, uh, you know, if you're a pro, you got a coach. Absolutely. Um, so, and, and there's some other things. I mean, you mentioned the, the virtual staging. There's some other technologies that you're using and other marketing strategies that you're using when you're selling a home. What, what are some of those things that you do in that arena? Well, I, I think technology is great. Uh, but I also, we also have to remember that the old tried and true is important as well, right? So when we take on one of those expired listings, we're knocking on doors, we're making phone calls, we're sending letters out to the neighbors announcing, hey, on the market, now's the time to pick your next neighbor. So we're definitely doing those things. Those are important, you can't pull away from those. Right. But uh, technology, um, one of the things that we're using is Sly Dial or Sly Broadcast, mm -hmm. which basically takes, we'll say 500 to 1,000 neighbors of that specific area and blasts out a voicemail coming from me saying, hey, the home is now on the market. Mm -hmm. If you have a buyer that's interested. Yeah. Uh, we just did that up in um, Rancho Bernardo the other day. It was an expired listing, no luck with the first agent to get it done. Through that sly broadcast, we were able to generate three buyers that came by during our open house that had some interest, nice. which was great. So along with that, using technology is the demographics. I mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, For example, let's go a little uh, more central San Diego. You have downtown, Hillcrest, Bankers Hill, all minutes away from each other, but all completely different buyers. Right. So the National Association of Realtors spends thousands and thousands of dollars to get all these numbers and stats and studies. There's demographics out there of who's buying in what area. Right. We want to make sure we use that technology, we use those numbers and stats, and we gear, whether it's Facebook boosting. Facebook has been a huge part of our business. So we can actually pinpoint buyers that are more likely to buy our homes. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer the spray and pray. We can actually target those specific buyers. Right. That's awesome. been huge for us. Facebook boosting, Facebook targeting, that's huge. Cool. Well, glad you're here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Facebook Live. Um, awesome. So uh, just kind of uh, last question, you know, a big gap for buyers, particularly first-time home buyers, is really understanding what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. Um, you take special care to make sure those, those folks are educated. Could you talk a little bit about that and, and what sure. your process is when you work with a new buyer? So I think the first time buyers, that's, that's huge, right? There's a lot, there's some excitement there, but there's a lot of fear, fear of the unknown. And we hear all these first time buyer consults and uh, you know, a lot of that stuff is important. But most of the time what that consists of is meeting with the agent, you know, making sure that they're pre-approved, making sure that they're buying a home in a good area with a good school district, low crime rate, you know, those type of things. Those are all important. Mm -hmm. But quite frankly, who doesn't want to buy a home in those areas? That's right. standard. That meeting or that consult is usually there for the real estate agent to get them to sign something to work with them exclusively. I get it, no problem, that, that's important. But 
there's nothing really of value there. And so that's what we try to bring to the table. Um, one of the things that we try to do is be very proactive to educate our buyers because the state of California gives you 17 days on average to go ahead and make sure that you've kicked the tires on that car, on that home, right, before you can back out. You take out two weekends, you're down to 14 days. With life, family, work, everything else that comes with it, you just really don't have much time to make some huge decisions that are going to affect you for the next 30 years. Right. So, you know, for example, how do you hold vesting? <coughs> what are my out-of-pocket costs? Those are things that we've been able to really educate buyers on. So they're not making decisions on the fly. Right. So they're not getting a call at 4 p.m. in the middle of a workday. Their agent say, hey, I need you to go ahead and order your homeowner's insurance. Uh, who do I call? Right. I mean, that's tough. Right. So we want to make sure that they're educated before they get to that point. Yeah. Um, one of the big ones for us in that meeting is the timeline. Right. Going over those 30 days. Again, right. it moves fast. Well, yeah, it's like having a second job for 30 days. Ex oh, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> some, right? Um, so knowing what's res who's responsible for what, right? Buyer, seller, day three, day five, day say seven, day 17, all of those things, having that timeline, I find it could be a little overwhelming for some buyers, but they walk away feeling very comfortable. Yeah. We're literally write it out and let them know what every day is right. throughout that 30 days. And then when we're done, we give them that timeline. And eventually when we get into escrow, right, they feel so much more comfortable. They may not remember everything, yeah. but they can revert back or, or reference. They have an outline of it. They have an outline. Yeah. I remember Jesse saying something about contingencies and right. them being up. Or what about that request for repairs timing? That should be coming up, right? Yeah. It's just giving people peace of mind. It's a stressful process. Let's right. be honest. Right. Yeah. If can we be. can help alleviate any of that stress, we found that this, uh, this has been huge. Well, thank you for exhibiting that professionalism. It, it, as a uh, fellow industry professional, I can speak highly to, you know, when it's easier for clients, it's easier for everyone. So You're welcome. Thank you for that, and thank sure. you for being here. Sure. Um, uh, Jesse Salas from Harcourt Avanti Real Estate. Um, Jesse, if someone has a question about buying or selling real estate, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Best way, good old phone, right? 858-304-1504. Um, That's a directly to our office line. Um, if not, you can go to our website, Salas Sells, S-A-L-A-S, sells.com. And of course, you can reach out to me through Facebook Live here. Awesome. Boom. Thanks yeah. for being here, Jesse. Thank Appreciate you for having me. Uh, so next up, we have Dan Tentler to scare the crap out of us about... <laughs> All the bad guys on the internet. That's right. Um, so Dan Tentler is the founder of Phobos Group, uh, which provides attack, defensive, and intelligence services to companies using attack simulation, threat intelligence, breach analysis, and security consultation and strategy. Uh, Dan is an expert in network security, firewalls, and penetration testing and vulnerability assessment. That's thanks, right. Thanks for being here, Dan. Yeah. And, he, and he's going to pick a lock today for us. Oh, I'm better yet, I'm going to try and teach you how to pick a lock. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's the important part. And this one's really stiff, so maybe we'll do the other one. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so yeah, t tell us about what your company does and how you, how you help your clients. So we, we do uh, what we like to describe as attack simulation. And uh, the reason we call it that is because, uh, by and large, the industry that, that produces services and, and products uh, tends to use what I like to call creative latitude in naming things. Hmm. And uh, when a new interesting term comes out or when a new interesting idea comes out, every sales and marketing department will call whatever they offer that new thing, thereby diluting the meaning of the word. Hmm. So uh, there's a lot of industry jargon that's used in computer security. The things that you'll hear are some of the things that you mentioned, R red teaming, penetration testing, that sort of thing. Um, but if you ask professional number one and professional number two, tell me what a pen test is, they will both give you wildly different answers, and that's a huge problem for everybody. So we decided to say, well, what we do is called attack simulation in that we simulate real attackers. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to mess that up. So, so what, what is that for a, for a big company, maybe your client? Sure. What, what does that look like? So the idea is um, if you have an organization that has some kind of defensive capability, uh, whereby you have what we call a blue team. So the red team are the attackers, the blue team are the defenders. If you have a blue team, um, it is a good idea to effectively, like, like you do in martial arts, to spar once in a while, to practice, to mm -hmm. make sure that you, you're on your game and you know what you're doing. Um, if, if you see, you know, Target has just been in the news, they got compromised. Home Depot is in the news, they just got compromised. Anthem just got compromised. Sony Pictures, they got turned inside out like a gym sock. Like, <laughs> right? It's a, there's a lot of colorful language that can be used in these sorts of, yeah. Gym so, sock's good. Right? We're keeping it PG-13. Right. <laughs> um, and then uh, just driving here, actually before I came here, um, um, the, there's a, a, a file sharing website called Mega, mega.co.nz, which is like a file sharing website. Mm -hmm. Popular among people that want to trade, sometimes interesting, sometimes shady things. Um, 
uh, they were hacked in November of 2016, mm -hmm. and this morning, whoever the hackers were published all the stuff that they that they stole. Mm -hmm. So, like when I get done here, there's some fires I get to go deal with. So, um, I routinely do these things where a, a big leak will happen, and then I will analyze the leak and then try and point out things like. Um, based on this, the presence of this file, or based on this configuration, or based on whatever sort of artifacts I discover in the leak, we can make assertions on the security posture of the organization that was compromised. So mm -hmm. I did that with Sony Pictures, that got a lot of press, uh, and it was things like um, files called password.xls just being openly found on file shares, like mm -hmm. really egregious, low-hanging, we call it low-hanging fruit, like it's practically trivial to you know, you go and you click around in your office and you find, oh, look, I have a, a Z drive or a Q drive or whatever the drive is that is like where all the files are stored for the company. Mm -hmm. And you poke around enough in those files and lo and behold, there's a treasure trove of interesting stuff that you probably shouldn't be looking at, you probably shouldn't have access to, but for the sake of convenience, somebody put somewhere that made it completely public. Right. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like that that's like really low-hanging fruit, basic, we call it security hygiene that can be conducted. And, and our focus is basically to show people there's a lot of little things you can do that are not very technical in nature, that are not, not difficult to do to dramatically increase your own security posture. But what, what would some of those things be just for our viewers? Uh, so one of the first big ones that we, that we like to tell everyone is what's called egress filtering. That is traffic leaving your network destined out for the internet. Um, you may remember in the very recent past, the NSA had a bit of an issue in that some of their attack tools got leaked. And um, the, the most interesting one, arguably the most, uh, the most colorful one that everybody has been using is called Eternal Blue. It uh, exploits a service called SMB, which is the, the way that Windows does file sharing. So if you've ever used file sharing in Windows, the way that computer A talks to computer B is over a protocol called SMB that works over port 445. That protocol, uh, the NSA had found some problems in and uh, wrote an exploit to, to exploit those things. Um, so what we ended up with was uh, a group called the Shadow Brokers somehow gained access to some of these tools and leaked them to the internet. And now if you Google hard enough, you can have NSA-grade attack tools. Anybody, children, whoever. Yeah. If you Google hard enough. You, yeah. yeah. So, so, so uh, like, what are some of the things that we can, you know, the average person watching maybe can, can be doing to... Uh, you know those, those patch warnings you get on Windows that say, like, oh, there's some new patches you have to install. You should probably install those. Because the really interesting, like, tinfoil hatty discussion to have is, Microsoft knew about the bug, the, the eternal blue bug, a month before the Shadow Brokers released it. But we still have millions and millions of computers that got infected. What does that tell us? Mm -hmm. That tells us that people aren't doing just super basic security right. hygiene, like just letting their computer reboot once a week to patch. So there was a patch available, Microsoft had published it, but yep. most people's computers hadn't picked up that update. Right, and the reason that that's the case is because people tend to uh, not deal with security patches. They're, oh, it's a, I don't want to reboot right now. That's annoying. The newer versions of Windows, like Windows 10, for example, I think 8 and 10, both force you to reboot by default. Like, by default, you'll if you leave your computer open and uh, on during the evening, like, I think at the, the default time is 3 in the morning, mm -hmm. where if patches come in, it'll automatically apply patches and reboot your computer. But if you had stuff open, then you still have the same sort of problem of, I had a bunch of stuff open my computer, and it rebooted through the night. Right. And then that happens. You get bit, and you're like, oh, my God, I lost that report. <laughs> so you go, and you turn that thing off, and now we're back to square one right. where you're not getting patches. Yeah. So uh, the WannaCry uh, ransomware that you may have heard the news of, the one that shut down the NHS, yeah. the reason that that was the case was because the people that wrote WannaCry, they used the NSA Eternal Blue exploit as a, a, a vehicle to transmit their ransomware. And the NHS, NHS was effectively brought to its knees um, because the vast majority of their systems were old and unpatched. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, so if you have a business and you run Windows, uh, it's probably a good idea to just do basic maintenance because you'll have what we call technical debt, yeah. uh, where, whereby I don't feel like rebooting computers or I don't feel like investing in security at all um, will lead to, oh my god, my business is completely down and maybe my building is on fire now. <laughs> well, well, seriously, so you have like a $15 million MRI machine that's powered by embedded Windows XP. Like XP is an end of life operating system. Microsoft is no longer keeping it up mm -hmm. at all. And then now WannaCry comes along, and you're like, well, the $15 million MRI machine that I have in my, in my lab, in my, in my hospital, is now infected with ransomware, and I can't use this machine, but I can't do anything because the vendor that sold me this MRI machine 
has gone out of business and we're not in a position to be able to buy another MRI machine for $15 million. Couple that with the fact that you can't just gut the computer that's controlling the MRI machine and install a new operating system because then it's not FDA approved. Hmm. Because the FDA has to approve medical equipment before it goes on sale. Like before it can be marketed, the FDA has to give it its stamp of, of approval. So we're in this bizarre catch-22 where like, yeah. It's kind of dumpster fiery. Well, so what what <laughs> what do you want the result to be? So if you work with a company, what do you want the, them to come out of, at the end with? Uh, the the intention of our engagements is to basically try as best as we can to make your defensive posture as good as we can deal with, so that if anybody comes to along along to try and actually attack you, they have to be better than us. Which means that we will bring you above what I like to call the security waterline. Or uh, to give you an example, if you were ta to take an unpatched Windows say a Windows 8 or Windows 7 machine, let's call it Windows 7. Take an unpatched Windows 7 machine and plug it directly into the internet with no firewalls, no software updates, nothing like that. It has a lifespan of between 15 to 30 seconds before it gets infected with malware, right? So if basic, <laughs> basic security hygiene, just patch the thing, right. that's it. Just patch right. it and you're safe against that stuff. Patch it. Yeah, patch it. Cool. So, well, we're, we're a little tight on yeah, time yeah. today, so we're gonna have to wrap up. Totally. But, um, so if there, company owner or just someone who has questions about internet security or IT security or mm -hmm. just security in general, what's a good way to get in touch with you, Dan? Uh, phobos.io, P-H-O-B-O-S.io is our site. Uh, info at phobos.io is a way to get get a hold of myself and the other co-founder. Uh, we're happy to talk, happy to chat. We like doing exploratory phone calls. Tell us your problems. We'll try and help. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here, Dan. Happy to. So we're going to wrap up. We'll skip the mortgage update today. We're a little tight on time, but uh, we usually wrap up by asking our distinguished guests uh, what their one takeaway from today's show is. So we'll start with you, Jesse. What, uh, what, what did you talk about, or maybe what did Dan or I talk about that you think the viewers really need to take home? I think it's a no-brainer. Patches, right? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's face it. I, I'm one of those where I just turn my computer to sleep all the time, and I never actually updated or restarted. That yeah. needs to be done. Obviously, that's huge. Um, yeah. So, yes, we're going to start implementing that daily. Now. Yeah, <laughs> daily. right on. Yeah. yeah, I took that one home, too. How about, how about you, Dan? Uh, there are clever and interesting ways to buy a home that I was unaware of that existed. So I, uh, you will be hearing from me in the future. Sounds good. Cool. cool. Awesome, Dan. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to wrap up. This is the new and improved Real Talk San Diego coming you from the, to, from the Smarter San Diego studios here in San Diego. Uh, we're bringing you the business of life in America's finest city. Uh, we're live every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, our next show, Real Talk with the Mortgage Doc, is in two weeks on June 28th at 12 p.m. We'll have Realtor Gloria Roma. Uh, thanks for watching, and everyone be good to each other out there. Bye-bye.